We have a question from Rodney. Hey, Rodney. First off, I would like to thank you for answering my email so fast. I've been going over and over my options on what to do. Do I want to wait on the new version of Microsoft Home Server or install Linux Server? I've been reading help files on both systems. I've been using Windows 7 RC2 for some time. It's a really good operating system. I know how you feel about Windows, but 7 is a real improvement over Vista. I use Microsoft Office for my daily work. You asked what I want a server to be. Well, here goes. I would like to store files, mail server, and remote in over the Internet. Also down the line, home automation is on the list. Mm. With the extensions, WHS can do all this. Linux is just so hard for even a geek to set up. What should I do? I'm just the average Joe. I have to... Uh, do the work myself as I do not have the money to hire it done for me. Opening ports, forwarding ports, these things I've read about but never have done. So here I sit wondering what do I do? Give up on my dream of a teched out home or keep plugging along trying to figure it all out. I have no one to turn to, Robbie. I do not expect someone to do it for me for free. Just wondering what path to go down. What do I do? Hmm. It's interesting that it, that you know we open up for viewer questions and suddenly it's all about servers and, and mm -hmm. creating a home server. Maybe it's the talk about on RAID that has really mm. uh, prompted people to think, hey, maybe I can set up a server at home. Mm -hmm. Interesting enough, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Rodney, it sounds to me like you're, you're just getting into this stuff and you just want to learn and you haven't really dealt with port forwarding and virtual servers on your router and things like that. So I would, you know... There's many different ways that you can get started. I don't think that you're going to find an all-in-one solution that's that's going to be out of the box, easy breezy for you. Uh, but that's where you can tap into communities like Category Five mm -hmm. and be able to uh, ask your questions. Like start with with kind of like the minimum where you want to start. Uh, so that could be your uh, your web hosting or or something along those lines. Let's see, um, store some files, have a mail server, uh, remote in over the internet, that kind of stuff. So what you could try is just kind of start with that store files. So you need to have uh, a network attached storage server. So that's where I would say, you know, we've, we've looked at Unraid in the, in the recent past. That would be something I would definitely recommend. Good way to get started. And keep in mind that Unraid is, is Linux based. So uh, being based on Slackware, a, a flavor of Linux, you're able to install other applications onto it to make it do more of what you want to do. But it, out of the box, it's just a network attached storage device. So if you were to follow kind of the instructions there, even if you only have a couple of hard drives, uh, you don't have to go all out like I did and, and try to get a whole amount of space. But if you started with creating just a basic network attached storage box with that, uh, or you can look at other products like FreeNAS or, or something like that, OpenFiler, and be able to um, just get network attached storage that's based on Linux because that allows you to expand. Uh, once you've got that running and you're happy with being able to save uh, files through the network and you've got that going the way that you want, then you can look at installing other applications. So once you want to get into the mail server, you can install that as a, as a system on, the, uh, on the, that server. Now, setting up a mail server can be pretty complicated because you've got to uh, you have to you have to have a static IP address unless you have some kind of dynamic DNS uh, set up uh, because when somebody sends an email to your you know at whatever dot com it has to point to your server so if it's going to be hosted in your house that can get uh, really troublesome if you are on a dynamic IP address probably not worth it uh, in a case where you know if you're just getting normal amounts of email you might as well use shared hosting for that. Um, being able to remote in over the internet, that's easy breezy uh, with any system. You don't need a server for that. If you have uh, a Windows system running on your network, you can uh, activate remote desktop or you can install something like VNC server. Uh, I like uh, tight VNC is probably my preference as far as VNC stuff goes. You can use ultra VNC. Uh, these are applications that you can install on your s system. And then you can access that computer. You can actually see the desktop from a remote location. Um, alternatively, if you're on Linux, uh, you would be able to run uh, like Vino server, uh, which is automatically, that's actually included in, in Ubuntu Linux as well. And you can just activate it by going uh, into remote desktop and turn that on. So, um, so there's all different things that you can do, but I think the best thing for you, Rodney, might be to start at the bare minimum and just say, okay, well, what's the key thing that I want this server to do right now? Because I don't think it's wise to try to jump in full out. I think it's best to try, you know, 
kind of like baby steps. Just kind of work your way in, get a feel for opening up those ports on the server, because if you want to be able to access this stuff from a remote location, you've got to know how to open ports, which is usually on your router going to be called virtual server. Um, that basically means setting up a static IP address, basic networking uh, on the server, and then being able to point the router to uh, allow access to the, to the ports that are on that server. Um, but it, if you have, once you've kind of given that some consideration, and I hope that I've given you some food for thought, I know it's not real answers, it's more just kind of trying to nudge you towards maybe finding the answers, uh, or, or at least finding the direction that you want to take. Um, let me know a little bit more, let the community know at category5.tv a little bit more about what, what it is that you specifically want to do right, right away. Uh, not so much looking towards the big picture, just the little picture for now and just kind of get things started and, and work your way up because you can always add things to the server. So that's my thought. Um, good guy recommends looking at portforward.com. Mystic Sam likes that site. Lots of helpful information. Yeah, what's that? And portforward.com. <coughs> yeah, it looks like to me like a repository of information for mm -hmm. how to configure your particular router. Or perhaps it's a service. Well, good guy, says, good guy, you guy, can, good guy says you can find pretty much information on pretty much anything. Unless it's like UPnP. Oh, that's an advertisement. Be careful of this stuff. Oh. Watch out for the ads. Mm -hmm. See that? It, it makes. It, I clicked on something and it says, okay, click here. But up at the top it says, click here to skip the advertisement. Watch out. Mm -hmm. So... All right. Well, that's uh, recommended by Good Guy, and he's a good guy. So he's a smart we'll guy. Let you, uh, we'll make, let you make the decision if that's something that's going to help you or not. Mm -hmm. But it looks like a, a bit of a repo about uh, how to set up port forwarding on different routers. But it's fairly simple, anyways. And you can always get into DDWRT, install that on your router, give you some extra access. Cool. A lot of people are talking about NX. Are you familiar with NX? Mm-hmm. I don't, um, NX is another way to connect to your computer. And my experience is I don't really like it for connecting to Ubuntu because it creates a new X session, which can be okay. That can be good. It's more like a remote uh, thin client hmm. than it is a, a, like a VNC session, for example. But it's something to look at for sure. The Worko likes it. Yeah. It's effective. But if, you're, if you have things, if you're running a server where things are running in a GUI, uh, say like a virtual machine is running uh, in VirtualBox and you need to remote into that server and manipulate stuff in the virtual machine, well, using an X, it's going to create a new session so the server is not on your screen. Uh, using VNC, on the other hand, you're connecting into an existing X session so it, uh, it, it, you have access to those things that are already running. So that's where that goes wrong.